You can turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 22. I'm going to talk to you today about, do you love the resurrection? I saw the postie the one time, and he said, uh, postie meaning somebody that believes that they're going through the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. They would say the Great Tribulation. That's not actually a biblical term as far as a title is concerned. Great Tribulation is merely a description of the time that's coming for the nation of Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob being another name for Israel. He was called Jacob, then God called him Israel. Um, we don't have to see the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, he's already been revealed to you if you're saved, you know. And I've been preaching in favor and in, in support, I should say, of the what's called pre-trib rapture, the catching up of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble would be the better way to say it. But I've been preaching in defense of that for years. Um, put out hundreds of videos on that whole thing. And these people still come along and, well, he believes the pre-trib rapture. Oh, what a dummy. Uh, no, actually, you're the one that's ignorant of the scriptures. There's no justification for putting the body of Christ into the time of Jacob's trouble. Right? And you can get into all the scriptures, and I have. I've covered every scripture that's ever been brought out by a postie. Okay, every single argument that they can come up with, I've just, forget it, it doesn't work. Um, but just a simple, logical way of looking at it, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the book of Revelation, are we going through it? Oh, yes, we have to, because the body of Christ has to be purified more. Huh? The blood of Jesus Christ didn't purify us enough? Now we have to go through intense suffering to be able to be purified more? Weird. And the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus has to be revealed to you. Uh, not if you're born again, he doesn't. Jesus Christ was already revealed to me in the past when I got saved, when he saved me. He moved into my life. His Holy Spirit moved into my body. And he started to change my mind on a lot of the things I used to enjoy to do. I don't need to have Jesus Christ revealed to me. And if you do, well, then you're lost. That's why I kick posties so hard, because they're lost people. But this postie, I saw this video and he said, I don't think we should focus on the timing of the rapture. I, I think we should focus on Jesus. You know, I, I love Jesus more than, than uh, the rapture or whatever else. And I just thought, boy, you are an idiot. Um, with all Christian charity, of course. Uh, they are idiots. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, again, I'm not trying to just, I'm not trying to be mean to people or whatever. I'm just defining things in very blunt, brutally honest terms. I can't stand preachers that just, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. You're, a preacher is supposed to be offensive. Christians are supposed to be offensive. We are the salt and the light. Salt is irritating to people and, and things. Light, it blinds the eyes and it's irritating. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Right? They hate the light. They don't want to come to it, the Bible talks about in John chapter 3. But uh, we're supposed to irritate people. And if you believe that the body of Christ somehow has to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and we shouldn't talk about the timing of it or whatever, you're an idiot. Because the Bible puts very strong emphasis on the resurrection, on the catching up of the body of Christ. It's an extremely important doctrine. And the ignorance of Scripture that these people have that they could say, I think we should talk about Jesus and not about the rapture or resurrection, the biblical term there. Um, they're showing their ignorance, ignorance of Scripture. I'm going to show you why I say that. Um, it's very important here. Matthew chapter 22, verse 23. Okay, it says here, The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. Remember that. And asked him, saying, Mo Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother, likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. I don't believe that story for one second. I think those guys were lying, and I think the Lord knew it. They just came up with some kind of a philosophical, what if there'd be somebody that would be, you know, and I've seen this with lost people. They come up with these philosophical arguments. Well, I once knew somebody, my sister's brother's roommate's cousin's father-in-law, and he was such a, yeah, I don't believe you. But that's the way these lost people do it. Verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. 
But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Hey, in the resurrection, we don't believe in the resurrection, but we'll ask you this philosophical question. Oh, because the Lord's, I guess, supposed to say, Oh, yeah, whose wife is she going to be in the resurrection? Oh, oh they caught me. Oh, they cornered me. I don't know what to do. You know, trying to corner God manifest in the flesh. Good one there, educated uh, imbeciles out there. Hey, in the resurrection, I have a question. This philosophical thing. And the Lord says, uh, no, actually, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. What does that mean? Angels of God in heaven are... are winged but they're they're some kind of sexless beings walking no they're men they're all men so in the resurrection we all are men and i've done studies on that you can get into the all the scriptures on that uh that we will be conformed to the image of jesus christ jesus christ is a man okay so it's there but uh he says there um <clears throat> i am the god of abraham he goes down through it i'm not uh the God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You want to have a life, a, a good life? Well, then uh, you need to understand that God is the one that can give you that good life. Let's look about that. John chapter 20. You know, it's kind of weird. I just I have to just share something here. Um, the older I get as a preacher, the more I think about different heresies and whatever else stuff i was completely ignorant of when i first went into ministry and sometimes it kind of clouds my judgment I, i'm kind of thinking about oh yeah there's that group and there's this group and oh these people believe this and that believe <laughs> it's very complicated um out there all the different cults and everything else just blows my mind john chapter 20 verse 26 and after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Was Jesus Christ God? Yes, he was. Thomas just said it. And the Lord doesn't go on to say, hey, well, just to clarify, I'm the second person of the Trinity. Okay, I'm not actually God, you know, like God the Father. I'm just God the Son, which is a lesser God, but yet we're one God. Uh, no, my Lord and my God. So you want a statement? You get some Muslim or something. Oh, Jesus never claimed to be God and whatever. Well, here you have Thomas calling him my Lord and my God, and Jesus doesn't correct him. Verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, God, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So what is resurrection? If something is dead, it's dead it's buried how do you get it to be alive again it needs to be resurrected brought up from the dead then it has life again jesus christ is life go back to john chapter 11 john chapter 11 verse 21 then said martha unto jesus lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died Lazarus, he's dead, he's buried. Can God, the Lord Jesus Christ, in other words, can he bring him up from the dead? In me, he can have life. Huh. Verse 22, But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. You ready? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? 
You see, um, here's the interesting thing. You say, uh, give me some proof for the pre-trib rapture. Okay, I already gave you the best proof, and that is it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the nation of Israel. They need to have Jesus Christ revealed to them because they rejected him in the first century as a nation. There were Jews that got saved. Praise the Lord, can't wait to meet them in heaven. But a nation, as a nation, they rejected Jesus Christ. God gave them a spirit of slumber, and so most of them aren't going to get saved. And the salvation goes to the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy, you see. That's a really good proof. But another proof that comes right along behind that is the issue of resurrection. There are living and dead saints. The dead are caught up first, and we which are alive and remain caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. All right? Dead and living saints come up at the rapture, the resurrection of the body of Christ. But at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and Luke chapter 21, there's no mention of dead saints coming up. Not one mention. So compare scripture with scripture. Compare it, contrast it. There's no dead saints coming up when Jesus Christ comes back the second time. It's the second coming of Christ, meaning the second time that he touches down on the earth. Again, the posties, they'll come out and they'll say, well, if there's a rapture in between the first and second coming, then that means the second coming must be the third coming. No, it means that Jesus Christ is in the clouds and we go up to meet him. He's not coming down and touching on the earth. So there's two comings of Jesus Christ, but the body of Christ, we're called up to be with him. That's the resurrection. But you get this postie that came out that I talked about at the beginning. Um, I believe in Jesus. I think we should talk about Jesus, not about the rapture or the resurrection there and whatever else. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. You know what? The timing of the rapture is really not that important. Oh, it's very important. It's extremely important. If the Lord is going to take, catch us up, you know, way at the very end, uh, then you have a problem. Because then you have Christians going into a time when they could take the mark of the beast. And the Bible says, if any man take the mark and worship the beast and his image, he goes to hell. So what do you do with that? We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption, according to Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 4. But yet you can take the mark of the beast and then lose your salvation. See, you get into that stuff as a postie and you get all messed up. And again, I know people, young people, they get into the thing and they start to wake up to the conspiracy and they wake up to all this other stuff and all of a sudden you just have to go along with whatever you hear and you, and you can't backtrack because your pride gets lifted up because you're a novice. You haven't studied for years and years. I've watched a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. Woo, whoop de doo Okay, I studied for many years before I ever made my first video. But, you know, you, you learn all these things and you, you study all this and all of a sudden you find some preacher like me and I say, oh, actually, no, this whole post-trib thing is a bunch of nonsense. Oh, that's John Nelson Darby and, and all this other stuff. Let's look at the scriptures, okay? And no, John Nelson Darby didn't found the whole movement, okay? That's another lie that's been taught, um, which I've debunked. If you want to get into all that other stuff, but um, compare scripture with scripture. Lower your pride. If you're a post-tribber, you are wrong. You say, well, I'm, I'm pre-wrath, mid, you know, post, post-trib, pre-wrath. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's before the time of Jacob's trouble. The body of Christ can't go in because if it did, it would make the word of God a doctrinal mess. Continue here, verse 26. Actually, verse 26. Uh, tell you what, let's go back here, verse 25. I forgot I needed to make another point. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The dead in Christ. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The living in Christ. The two different parts of the body of Christ that you see when you get back into 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. You'll see the thing of the dead are called up first, then we which are alive and remain. We go up. Jesus is giving a little foretaste of what would later be revealed to the Apostle Paul. That's why Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Right? 
And he goes on. Uh, and again, the second coming of Jesus Christ that you read about in Matthew chapter 24, you know, immediately after the tribulation of those days, um, you know, oh, it's after the tribulation, it clearly says it. Well, if you take it out of context, yeah. But it's the second coming. It's what it's talking about. And every eye sees him. It's, a mo it's not a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? Compare Scripture with Scripture. But there you have the resurrection right there. And it is Jesus Christ. That's why it's very important to be straightened out in that doctrine. And if somebody says, I refuse to be pre-trib, um, they're not saved. They don't understand. They feel like they have to have, do more and pay with their own sufferings. Oh, you know, what about Israel? Oh, yeah, whatever. There is no Israel. That, that's why posties all a lot of times will go in with the whole thing of uh, replacement theology. There is no Israel. They're done. They're finished. God's done with the nation of Israel. Yeah. I've been fighting these people for years, brethren. I really have. I mean, even, even before I was saved, I was seeing some of this post-trib, post pre-trib stuff going back and forth with people at the church building I grew up in. I've been around this stuff all my life. I'm 47 years old. I've learned a few things, you know. I'm not trying to be prideful. I'm just and saying facts because you get these Gen X and, or not Gen X, the, uh, the millennials and the Gen Z is what I was thinking of. And they think that they know everything. You know, I have access to everything on my iPhone, so I'm super brilliant or something. Now, base your pride a little bit there, child. Go on down. Listen to an older man. Verse 27. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Uh, you get the full implication of that if you're believing in the catching up of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Look at it again. Um, she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. He's coming back. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly. It's a secret. Not all the world's going to know. We get called up to be with the Lord. They're going. They aren't going to say, "Oh, you know, millions have disappeared" or something. It won't be millions either. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that many people that go up when this time finally comes. But it's a secret, catching up the body of Christ. Behold, I show you a mystery. Not every eye is going to see Jesus when he catches his bride up. You have John on the Isle of Patmos, and he's called up. All right. Um, just one guy there in, in isolation. The master has come and calleth for thee. He calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. John hears his voice, a trumpet, like a trumpet talking with me, which says, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter, Revelation chapter 4. And immediately I was in the spirit. He's up. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that he outed, had an out-of-body experience. That's another one that Post he's come out with, that when he was in the spirit, and that means that his body is laying there on the island of Patmos and the, the Spirit went up or something. No, compare spirit, Scripture with Scripture. There's times that Paul says, I'm with you in spirit or, you know, I'm, I was there and, you know, my spirit and things. Again, I've done all the studies on that. If you can, if you want to look into that. Um, but it says here, the master has come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You see what's being revealed here? Now, if, you are, if you're saved and the Holy Spirit is there inside you, you're saying, wow, if you've never seen this before, probably if you've seen, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've heard me say this already, so it's not a big surprise. But if you haven't, then you're probably saying, wow, that's really deep. That's really neat. What a blessing. And it is. God's Word is a blessing, but it's uh, hid from a lot of people. God doesn't just reveal this stuff to everybody. Acts chapter 4 Go to Acts chapter 4 next. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees, you know, the ones that don't believe in the resurrection, came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They don't believe in the resurrection. They're grieved about that. 
And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Hmm. Uh, what were they preaching? They were preaching Jesus and the resurrection. You know, the resurrection needs to be part of our gospel, brethren. It isn't just a thing of God can make you a better person. You can be a better you. No, we're going to be resurrected. There's eternity in heaven. And you get to go if you're saved. If God saves you, you'll be resurrected someday. If you die, well, then the dead in Christ shall rise first. That time will come. I'm going to see my saved relatives. They're going to be up in heaven. They'll get there, you know, up, caught up to the clouds, and I go up after them. And if I'm living, um, I get to go up. That's pretty amazing. And with all the, excuse me, all the bad stuff that's coming to this world, I think preaching Jesus and the resurrection would probably be a good idea. And forget about the, the liberals and whatever else out there. Uh, I don't think that they have power to put us into prison yet. I mean, some places in Europe, I know that there's a lot of sissies over there with the, in the law system and things, and they, they're thin-skinned and not uh, very open-minded, and they want to imprison Christians that believe the Bible, especially the King James Bible. And so they try to pass laws and whatever else, but um, here in America, um, there's not really any kind of threat about being put in prison yet, you know, for preaching the resurrection, but I'm sure that they'd like to do that. But I'm not going to allow that. I'm just going to continue to fight. If it comes well, it's not going to be cause, you know, be because I was uh, cowardly or something like that. I'm going to fight. Um, but I just find it as an interesting thing there that there's this weird movement to say, you know, you shouldn't talk about the resurrection. You shouldn't talk about the catching up of the body of Christ. Uh, actually, we should. We really should. And tell people, you know what, if you're scared of the future, and if you're, at law, if you're watching right now and you're lost, and you're really frightened about the future, you're looking at the wars and rumors of wars, the nuclear weapons and things, and, and the economy about ready to crash, and uh, famine coming, and all these other things, you know what, there's a resurrection. And his name is Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, and he that liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. That's a promise to a future generation. And I believe that that generation is alive right now. I mean, you get some brother or sister that's, you know, really elderly or whatever, and they, they have some kind of a sickness or something. They might not make it. It could be years yet. I don't know. I'm not really sure of the timing of the resurrection there. But it's coming. Why? Because the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. So as I look and I see the development of their trying to make the Mark of the Beast system come in and all this other stuff um, that we're supposed to fight as Christians and hinder, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Again, another good scripture uh, proving that the body of Christ is supposed to be hindering that whole system. And when we get taken out of the way, then the Antichrist can be revealed. Uh, that's why John is on the island of Patmos and he gets caught up. And after that, the Antichrist is revealed in chapter 6 of Revelation. So many things tie together, brethren. If you don't get it, it's because you haven't studied. You've watched some conspiracy video or something of the pre-trip rapture is a lie or something. And you've been deceived. You need to study the scriptures more and lower your pride and admit that you've been deceived. But it's a very important thing. And to give people hope, it isn't just, oh, join our religion and it has nice perks to it or something. No, no. You get saved if God saves you. The really bad times that are coming into the future, and the body of Christ is going to go through some of it, some bad things, the beginning of sorrows. Yeah, I believe that. But what I'm saying is the real bad stuff the book of Revelation describes, that's for the nation of Israel. It's not for me as a Christian. And I'm going to be called up before that. The resurrection. It's a wonderful thing. Acts chapter 17 What would happen if I preached the resurrection? What would, what would people think about me? Acts chapter 17, verse 16 through 33. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the, whole, or the city wholly given to idolatry. 
Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews, and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange God, gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Huh. Paul was preaching Jesus and the resurrection? Well, it's all just about Jesus. Let's just talk about Jesus and not about the resurrection. The resurrection is part of it, brethren. There's no point to the gospel if there's no resurrection. If you just die and you dissolve and that's it, well, you don't come back. Well, then it's a waste of time. No, preach to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is, whereof thou speakest. Um, wherein, where, may we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou speakest, is. Excuse me. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know wherefore, therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Not a very nice thing to say. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Amen. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the God is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. For the times, for the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, resurrection, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Hmm. Uh, that's the way you have to handle the whole thing too, brethren. Uh, you get to talking to people, you get to witnessing to people. The Lord opens up a door of, of utterance that you can speak to somebody an opportunity to share the gospel, share the gospel and the resurrection. And notice it wasn't Jesus Christ that they mocked. It was when they heard the resurrection of the dead. What? Oh, okay, yeah, you know. Oh, there's going to be this catching up, this rapture thing and whatever else, and the saints go up and things. Hollywood makes fun of that stuff. There have been multiple things that have come out, and I'm not saying to research it or look into it or whatever, but they make fun of it. They think it's funny, the resurrection. Well, who are they really attacking? They're attacking Jesus Christ because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Hmm. And you get those people and they start to mock. What do you do? Depart from them. Romans chapter 6. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, down through verse 8. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that, as many, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Life. Resurrection. 
Do you have a Christian life? Well, it should be tied into the resurrection. I mean, if you believe that you're going to just die and fade away and whatever else, well, well that's not much of a promise. I believe that, you know, I have to continue to try to keep this body of flesh in good shape, but I have to continually put it down, the sinful desires of my flesh. Um, but I'm pretty much wearing this old body out. I talked about the pain of youth study that I did not too long ago. Um, but I'm going to get a new body one of these days at the resurrection. So I might as well uh, do a little bit of suffering right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll end there. I'm always very careful to uh, not give my flesh more than it deserves. And I see a lot of people, they just give into the flesh and, oh, well, there's a pain. Oh, quickly, pain medication. Oh, there's some kind of a thing. I'm thirsty. Okay, I have to have something to drink right away. And, and you know, I remember a preacher I heard the one time and he said that uh, sometimes he'll be working, you know, doing something you know, writing a book or whatever else, and he said, I have to go to the bathroom. And oh, I have to get to the bathroom. And he'll just kind of say, you know, just hold on, I'll finish this sentence and then I'll go. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't want the flesh to get too strong, you know. I mean, don't destroy your bladder or something like that. But, you know, don't just, uh, the flesh wants it, just get it to form right away. You know, be, be tough, be strong. You have to toughen up a little bit. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 through 58. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? That's a problem. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. That's why it's important to preach the resurrection along with Jesus Christ. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In this life, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So it's talking about there in verse 21. By man came death, Adam. By man came also the resurrection of the dead, Jesus Christ, in other words. Verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. In other words, the, soul, the body and the soul the body is separate from the soul in heaven until all things are done and then they become all in all. It's God. There's one throne, the end of the book of Revelation. Right? And the Lord's not, you know, Jesus isn't standing at the right hand of God anymore. It's they become all in all. Okay, it's a very deep thing there. Uh, verse 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Where are they then baptized for the dead? Or Romans chapter 6, we already read about that, the baptism for the dead there. It's talking about showing by baptism that you are dead with Christ, that you rise up as a new creature. Um, verse 30, And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us drink and... Uh, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? See, lost people are going to question you. I don't quite understand. Resurrection? Really? You know, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? 
Uh, verse 36, Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Um, we're not going to look the same. In other words, when we come up. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Uh, there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Yes, we will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. In the resurrection, we will be angels, like the angels of God in heaven. Male. That's what the Bible teaches. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's going to be it for this study. Um, what a precious promise, promise that we have about the resurrection. Um, this life isn't it. It isn't just... I lived a good life, you know, I was a, a good person and whatever else, and I, you know, enjoyed my Christianity or so. No, there's going to be a resurrection. Uh, get a new body. It's going to be a wonderful thing. You can't leave that out of the gospel. Paul was preaching to them Jesus and the resurrection. Um, it's not some kind of a minor doctrine, right? And you can look and you can share with people, this is what the future is. I remember seeing a secular thing this week. I was watching a financial um, thing, and and um, the guy was talking about uh, the cashless society, and, and the interviewer was a woman, and she said, uh, "What's the end goal of all this stuff that the bankers are trying to do?" And the you know the dollar could go into default here soon, and Janet Yellen is saying we need to raise the debt ceiling, otherwise the dollar will default, and it'll be the end of the dollar, and America will collapse, and all this other stuff, and. Yeah, but if you raise the debt ceiling and you start to print more money, then that's also going to cause higher inflation, and they're going to have to try to chase that with higher interest rates, and it makes everything unaffordable, and then there's a liquidity crisis. America is at the end, you see. Okay, the American dollar and everything, it's collapsing. The BRICS nations, I think 81 of them are, 81 new nations will be joining BRICS here in June or something, I think it is. Blow your mind. When you actually study what's going on, it's you know world-changing stuff that's happening right now, and they want to bring in central bank digital currencies and the whole thing, Pfft, crazy. And what's the end goal? What's the end goal? I don't understand what's going on. Well, it's called the mark of the beast. Oh, and it's called world government, and it's called the antichrist ruling things in the Catholic Church, in world domination, power, and and um, really bad stuff. Oh, that's really scary. Yeah, it is. But let me preach to you, Jesus and the resurrection. There's great hope. I'm not really worried about it. I mean, we might get to see some pretty bad stuff, some famine and wars and rumors of wars and things and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. Uh, perilous times shall come. 
there's a bunch of prophecies that are pointed at us in the body of Christ, even in the Pauline epistles about the end times. Sure, it's going to be bad. But uh, boy, the book of Revelation, when you read all that bad stuff there, whew, scary. But there's a resurrection that comes before it. That's why John went up. So, um, watch my stuff on the pre-trib rapture, the catching up of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. It, you know, again, I've said in some studies, I won't call it pre-trib rapture. Yeah, and I try not to. I always try to clarify it, but there's a lot of people that don't understand the, the whole subject and whatever else, so... I'm always careful to try to explain it so most people can get it and whatever. <laughs> so I apologize if I've seemed a little bit uh, scatterbrained in this study and having a hard time sticking with you know, reading the scriptures and in terms of word for word, messing up some of the words. Um, we study all the time. And um, my wife, uh, I was getting ready to do the studies earlier and she came in and she said, you have to see this thing I just found and and uh, <clears throat> my mind you know I'm trying to focus on okay preach these two studies and whatever and she comes in and just drops this bombshell and, and uh, you know a big scam that's going on we haven't heard many people talking about this uh, tied in with the FDIC uh, and the Federal Reserve and a lot of this money stuff that's happening right now and um, real estate and all the other things uh, just Massive corruption, massive uh, scams, and you know, just tracking what's going on on a day to day basis. And uh, so, my mind is on other things right now, and I'm trying to get it refocused and go back to the study. So, again, I apologize if I've seemed a little bit scatterbrained, but um, such is the way of a preacher in the end times. <laughs> uh, this world is getting crazy. Um, and I appreciate the fellowship in the comments. And uh, so I've been, you know, a little bit uh, disappointed with the comments section based on the studies I brought out about the flat earth thing and and um, just the accusations against me and the, the attacks and whatever else. Uh, I know that there are brethren out there that believe in the flat earth and you're not as radical and whatever else. And, and I'm not against you and hate you and whatever else, but it, it, just seeing some of the people and the, the really nasty stuff that's being said about me and about this ministry, um, I want people to focus on the points that I bring up and then search the scriptures, study the scriptures, think about, hey, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I need to reconsider some things. Um, some people won't, whatever. Um, and I saw some of these flat earthers are also post-tribbers. Um, and so, uh, but I saw somebody wrote a comment and they said, I'd like to hear you talk about the rapture. Um, here's your study. I wanted to do a study about the resurrection because it's a great encouragement to me to think about Jesus Christ coming back and catching us up before the events of Revelation. Uh, it's always been a great encouragement to me. That's why the Bible says in relation to it, wherefore comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort. Uh, there's some crazy stuff happening but at some point the Lord's going to say okay the body of Christ has been through enough come up hither um, it's time to come home and then there's no more YouTube there's no more who's on the other side of the camera oh I met this brother and I thought he was a brother but he turned out to be a you know really wicked or I thought I met this person and we were having great fellowship and all of a sudden they went Pew, the wrong way and and just turned around and hated everything that they used to stand for no more questions, no more guessing at who's really saved and who's not saved. And I wonder about this doctrine, that doctrine. It's all cleared up. It's all over. No more arguments. And we go, we get caught up there to be with the Lord. There's a door open in heaven. John looks up and he sees a door open in heaven. You know, what's that? Well, that's proof of, it's not proof of anything. Okay. We haven't seen it. All right. Uh, we get, we look up there and the Lord says, come up, Heather. And immediately, up we go. And which, by the way, it's not going, I shouldn't say up we go in the sense of like a little rocket. You know, that's another thing. Well, if the earth is a sphere, then how can you get up if you're underneath? You know, you'd have to go up around this way or through the earth. 
It's a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Immediately I was in the spirit. Immediately I was in heaven. Boom. It's like that. So again, a lame argument, but whatever. I'm not going to get into it again. But uh, <clears throat> just seeing some of the stuff and seeing some of these arguments, and I just thought, okay, this is becoming very unprofitable. I'm not going to try to go through it all. So I'm going to be doing other studies. Um, just let that whole mess go, the flat earth thing. And it reminds me very much of the gap theory. Um, got into that with brethren years ago, and there was, you know, a lot of anger and things with that. It's not a gap theory, it's a gap fact and all this stuff. That there was a world before the, you know, God created, you know, Adam and Eve and that, that was kind of the recreated world and whatever arguments and taking scriptures and you go, well, that doesn't really mean that and this doesn't mean that and this that contradicts this scripture. And you get to arguing and fighting among Bible believers and you just say, okay, all right, stepping back now, um, <clears throat> I'm giving my opinions. I don't believe in the gap theory. I don't believe in the flat earth, period. Boom, done. Move on. Don't condemn me as a heretic. So, uh, like many of them did. But uh, the timing of the resurrection, uh, yeah, that is major doctrine. That is a very major doctrine. A lot of people say we shouldn't fight about it. Oh, yes, we should. Um, it relates very much to salvation. So, <clears throat> that will be it. And uh, we will see you in future studies. I don't know when I'll be coming out with this, some of this information that we're finding out. Um, we'll see. But uh, stick close to the book, brethren. And remember the resurrection. Don't leave the resurrection out of your gospel presentations that you give to people. Remind them that there is a resurrection of the dead and that that resurrection is Jesus Christ. Uh, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. We'll see you in the next video.